And the first thing he does, Brian Dable walks up to him and says, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Penford Sports Podcast. As always, I am your host along with Austin Rahilly. And we have a show for you today. We appreciate you tuning in to your spot for all news, drama, and updates on the NFL. So, we got a star studded guest lineup today. Uh, I'm going to turn it over first to our newest guest yep. that we're welcoming for the first time, a fellow Giants fan. A legend. You're going to have to unmute yourself, but I want to turn it over to Mr. Alex Otero Jr. How we doing tonight, baby? Doing good, baby. Feeling good. Feeling great. Glad to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're going to talk about all things NFL. We also got Zach on the line. Zach, how we doing? Doing good, feeling great, great to be here. Let's go. <laughs> and Andy, <laughs> how you feeling after that Vikings L? Yeah, definitely disappointing. But man, those New York Giants—they're coming in hot this season. That's yes, for sure. Sir. And Daniel gonna... Jones is looking hot this year, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, and we're gonna talk all about it. Let's start. <clears throat> Wild card round, game one, Saturday, 49ers and the Seahawks. And from the first half, you thought it was gonna be a close game. Yep. But Dirty Brock Purdy has something else in mind. He's got it done, dude. The ro- if he doesn't get Rookie of the Year, I'm going to be shocked. He just might. Because this guy, nobody, everything went wrong this season mm-hmm. from, the, from the outside for the 49ers. Everything went wrong except for Brock Purdy. This kid, this kid is good. Zach, I know you wanted Geno Smith to win this game. I mean, what's going through your head? I was getting so excited, man, when, uh, you know, when the e- or the Seahawks, excuse me, had a chance in the second half, and then it all just fell apart. And, uh, you know, you guys all said Gina was going down, and you were right, and yep. I'm willing to say that here in the podcast. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, man, that's life, you know. Yeah, anybody feel free to jump in, too. We don't really have, like, we don't need to go to anybody. But if anybody has thoughts on this game, like, jump in. I mean, I my thoughts are this. Like, I knew it was going to happen. I knew G, uh, Gino, Gino's good. Don't get me wrong. He's a good quarterback, but. All I needed was a new home. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, let's be honest here. Brock Purdy's just out of this world right now. Dude, so if he wins the Super Bowl, okay, if they make it. Yeah. He will be the only rookie to win a Super Bowl other than Brady. Yeah. And that's saying something, honestly. Um, yeah, Dirty Purdy's just an he's an absolute he's stellar unit dude. There. Like he's, he's a unit. Like he just got thrown in that role, and then there you go. Alex, what do you think of the young kid? I mean, this kid's younger than me, and he's out here slanging the football like nobody's business. And not only is he slinging it, but he's fully surrounded by talent too. Yeah, With Debo Samuel, Doug Hill, he's fully surrounded. So uh, they're you, they're CMC. a complete team right now. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, IU, Brandon CMC. IU, yeah, CMC, dude, mm-hmm. another guy that just needed a new. And home. their defense like, is amazing. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, the Forty the ers have been a fun team to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, every like I said, everything was against them. You know, Trey Lance goes down. What was it? First game of the season. Third. Third game of the season. Whatever. He goes down so early. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Oh, they got this young stud, Jimmy G. Jimmy G's getting it done for him. Jimmy G get in, gets injured. Everybody's saying, oh, their season's over. Yep. They had a chance with Jimmy G. But like I said, Brock Purdy had other things in mind. And honestly, I see I see this 49ers team going going a long way. I don't think I don't think they're gonna lose their next game, but um oh yeah, I, I, I it's it's fun to watch. Yeah, it is it's... fun to watch. And um the 49ers, man, you think they're gonna they're gonna go for a QB in this draft at all? No. I Why would they? Don't. They got three studs. No. I, th- I think they pick up a corner because that's where their – I think that's where their weakest link is. They have a wonderful offensive line. Yeah. Wonderful defensive line. Middle yeah. linebacking core is amazing. Um, they're, they're just losing talent at 
corner. Um, the running back is amazing. Wide receiver, fullback. Um, yeah, no. I think they go corner first round. <clears throat> so here's the question then on the 49ers in the quarterback position. Yep. What happens to Trey Lance at the end of the season if Brock Purdy keeps this up? Because Back Trey up. Lance, he was he had like a 50% QB passer percentage rating. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So is he just going to get dumped? He, I think he'll be benched, yeah. He'll be um, second string. Wasn't he a first-round pick too? Yep. If Jimmy G doesn't go anywhere, then Trey Lance oh, might Jimmy be third. Oh, Jimmy G's getting traded. I, it, I think he is. Yeah, if he doesn't know, Trey Lance will realistically be sitting at third string. I don't know, because Trey Lance yeah. started started over Jimmy G. But do you see what I'm saying, though? Yes. I, yeah. Jimmy G has proven that he's a talented quarterback this right. season. Brock Purdy clearly has, but... I mean, we haven't seen enough of Trey Lance. And like right. we said in his first three games, I mean, granted, it's early in the season, but 50% passing rating, that's not good. No. That's not good. Um, but, yeah, 49ers steamrolled the Seahawks, and just like that, Geno's phenomenal season has come to an end. 41-23. to we'll see, what, we'll see what happens with Geno next year. What do you think – I mean, what do you think Seahawks are going to do in their draft picks? What, what, what do you see the Seahawks doing? You know, I'm I'm thinking I'm leaning towards defense. Yeah, they didn't have a good as a defense as they did 2015. Yeah. What about you, Alex? What do you think? What do you think they're going? I agree, defense. Yeah, they need a linebacker. Yep. Mm. Bobby Wagner left, and they just croaked. They croaked him in a linebacker. Yeah. Exactly. Next game was also on Saturday. We had the Chargers and the Jaguars. Let's and go, cow, baby! What a let's game. go! What a game! We had we had the, we had the Jaguars. We wanted yep. Trevor Lawrence to win. I told everybody that Jags and are, are a um they're a legit threat. Yes, they are. And look at that, dude! And I'm gonna l- listen, man. It was his hair that did it. It was the hair. It was the hair, dude. I mean, Surf if you life. had hair like that, you'd play your heart out too. <laughs> I feel like God. Come on. I, I, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> we got a guy. Alex and I used to work with this guy that used to call Alex God. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he'd, he'd, oh, yeah. he'd have like the, he had this real deep voice. He'd walk up. He'd go, "What up, God?" <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as hell. But the guy also, you know, like ceiling tiles with like mm-hmm. the metal track. He went and he painted the track in between the ceiling tiles. That's something I do. And it was, <laughs> but dude, it was like splattered on the ceiling tiles. And we're like, why did you do that? He goes, well, um, it just made it pop. And we're like, no, it doesn't. It looks like, yeah, it pops, but it looks like crap too. It looks like crap too. So Damn, Rob Lopez, funny. if you're watching this. Get some help, brother. Um, but yeah, dude. Yeah, so, please. Yeah. <laughs> I need some painting lessons too, so we might go together. No, he's worse than you. Really? <laughs> yeah. Damn. So we're. Uh, w- w- I was watching the game, and my buddy goes, "This is this is really a battle of who has the better hair, Justin Herbert or Trevor Lawrence." I said, "Well, if if that's what it comes down to, give me Trey Law all the way. Mm-hmm. Give me Trevor Lawrence all the way. Are you kidding me?" But um. I don't know it was a game, and honestly, like I was pulling hard for for Jacksonville, and during that game, I was like, "This is not looking good. This isn't looking good." Pull up the box score for that game, dude. That comeback was amazing. Yeah, they like shut him out in the second half. They shut yeah, him it was, field it goal. was it was twenty twenty seven seven. Yeah, <clears throat> Trevor Lawrence and so, the Jacksonville Jaguars shut them out in the second half. Isn't that the the best um, comeback? No. No? I don't think so. Oh, I know. No, never mind. Okay. So Uh, either the Chargers offense was just terrible or the Jacksonville Jaguars defense was amazing because Trevor Lawrence threw quite a few interceptions. Jags defense has definitely upgraded. They got, um, they got, uh, who was it? Trayvon Walker. Um, yeah. Who else was it? Uh, And then this guy, a linebacker from Utah. Yes, uh, what's his name? Um, his name. Just pull up their roster. 
You can find his name right here. Um, he's a rookie too. This is it Devin Lo Devin Lloyd? There you go, Devin yeah, Lloyd from yeah. Utah. Another yeah. one. Yeah, and they got um Tariq Woolen, dude. He's an animal. Tariq Woolen. Or no, not Tariq. Animal. Wolf. Yeah, either either way, dude. Josh Allen. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they they just like made that second half their game. And it resulted in a Jags dub. And Trevor Lawrence earned the respect out of every person in America when he took his teammates to Waffle House to celebrate that dub. Dude, have you ever been to Waffle House? So good. Dude, it's 100%. so amazing. Who I mean, <laughs> if you're not at Waffle House at 3 a.m. On a Friday night. I don't know. Are you really living? Den Denny's is better, I think. No. Denny's is so no. much better, dude. Not at all. What? <laughs> not at all, bro. Dude, you haven't, you're not valid unless you go to Denny's, man. At least you didn't say IHOP. <laughs> I don't know, I don't <laughs> I'll put my hand in the ring for IHOP. I'll put my hand in the ring for IHOP. Let's go, dude. Will I'll you really? Bang it. IHOP is great. IHOP's great. Dude, the waitresses have one leg. I don't like that. <laughs> one leg and three teeth. Right. I don't like that. Yeah, that Those is waitresses are literally hopping, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they ain't popping. One, leg, one <laughs> leg, three teeth, and two titties, baby. Let's go. <laughs> God bless. You love to see it. You love to see it. But, yeah, Jags beat him 31-30. to 30. Beautiful comeback. I think Jags end up playing now. The Chiefs? Yep. Jags are gonna stomp the Chiefs. <laughs> I hope. I, no, I, I would really, love nothing sincerely more. hope so. I would love nothing. I'm sick more and tired of life. hearing Jonathan's garbage talk. Yeah, he's not even on the call yet, Thank so we God. can't even attack him. But Thank God. Um, yeah, Jags beat the Chargers 31 <laughs> to 30, and uh, yeah, I mean, Justin Herbert still without a playoff win. Chargers still without a playoff win in a long time. But the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence said, we're, we're making the playoffs and we're at least winning one. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, listen, it's not going to be my legacy, but this is going to be the start of my legacy. And watch Trevor Lawrence heat up. They're going to build that team around Trevor Lawrence. And they're going to progress, progress, progress. Yeah. They're going to be, give it a few years, they're a Super Bowl team. They're a Super Bowl team for sure. Because Trevor Lawrence has shown, this guy's a he's a young, talented QB. Do you know that his average... Um, speed between the time he gets the ball to the time he throws it is like two seconds. Yeah, it's amazing. Like overall huh. average is two seconds. That's incredible. That's quick. That's quick. Yeah, no, like you said, give him a few more years. Yeah. Same as the Lions, too. Yeah. Give them a few more years. It's going to be Jags and Lions. Gonna Super heat Bowl. Up. Next game. <laughs> Another one that was a close game that I, I didn't, didn't expect to be close at all. I was surprised by the Dolphins. The Bills and the Dolphins. And the oh, Bills yeah. just squeaked it out. Just barely squeaked it out against, what, the third string? Who was, even, who was playing QB for the third Dolphins? string? Yeah, it was Skyler like, Thompson. Yeah, like Skyler Thompson. Who's ever heard of this guy? You know, but he went out there and he showed, like, I'm going to play my heart out regardless. <laughs> There was also a video of, do you see the video of uh, Mike McDaniel just ripping a fat cloud on the sidelines? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, I'm serious. There's a, he's got a jewel in his hand. He's sitting there. He's going. <laughs> it was hilarious. He didn't end up kissing Sean McDermott at the end of the game, though. They came close. He almost kissed him. But I would have bet money that they did. He, he, wanted, <laughs> he wanted to. But, yeah, I mean, the Bills barely squeaked by, and. That was a game I was watching, and I'm sitting here thinking, if Miami beats the Bills, that's nuts. Zach was not going to be too happy with that. No. Yeah, I mean, Zach, what's going through your head? I mean, you've been rooting hard for the Bills this season. You're he a big loves, Josh Allen yeah, fan. Yeah, you love Josh Allen. Like, talk to, me about the, talk to me about these Bills. I'll be honest. There was a point there where I was a little worried, and then all of a sudden, the Bills are up 10 points. Like, that game was such a roller coaster, man. Lots of touchdowns, lots of back and forth. Josh Allen snuck it out. What a the game, though. Let me ask you this. Does it worry sure. you at all? No, because great teams find a way to win games, right? Whether it's a close game, whether it's a blowout, they know how to win. You know, and they're going to take that in with the play. They're going to take that game 
with them into the playoffs. And I mean, they're going to be ready to win, whether it's a close game or not, man. The Bills know how to win a game. They're going to squeak it out all the way to the end, baby. Yeah, but yeah. can I say this? How sustainable is an offensive run game when your QB is doing like over 50% of it? That's like a, how how much how far can you go with that? That's true. Point. Single that's a valid point. Oh, single Terry's a boss, bro. They just listen. Josh Allen well, is single Terry's not that good. It's, so he's gonna be Superman. You don't need anybody else when you got Superman, bro. Single Terry is not that good. Well, Austin, didn't, Austin didn't wait. Hold up. You're sixty sixth overall, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> bro, um, he's not even the top twenty running backs. That's kind of a bold statement. No, it's true. He's only okay. So the only reason why I say that, or the only reason why I think he would be, is because he plays for the Bills. Interesting. I don't think he'd be doing as much as he does now on the Texans. You know who is easily a top five running back? Who? This My boy legend. Tony Pollard. No. Oh, this cool. legend from the next game. On his best day. Give me Saquon freaking Barkley. The Bills beat the Dolphins all day. Thirty-one. Bark Barkley all day. Roo, roo. You know why his name's Barkley? Because he got a little bit of dog in him. He got a little bit of dog in him. <laughs> Just a little bit. He got a whole lot of dog in him. <laughs> wow, dude. Let's talk about this next game. All oh, week baby. long. I was on my hands and knees praying, give the Giants a dub. Give the GM a dub. Let Daniel Jones have a game. I can't let Andy Sorensen's Minnesota Vikings beat us. And sure what enough. What an embarrassing loss, dude. And sure enough, the Lord shines greatly on his beloved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's talk about it, Andy. Let's talk about it, Alex. Both of you had stakes in this game. Both of you. Me included. Yes, Yes, sir. We had our teams on the line for the playoffs. Andy, what's going through your head? Kirk Thuggins, this was your guy, man. The kid from Michigan, growing up playing. More like Kirk Suckins, dude. That <laughs> playing was terrible. He's playing football at a at a Christian high school, no more than an hour and a half away from <sighs> Zach Snyder's hometown. What what's going through your mind, man? Kirk, Kirk Thuggins honestly, was supposed to get it done, and he didn't. Honestly, I, I felt like the defense just stayed in bed, dude. They were so lethargic the it's entire It's not that they stayed in bed. Quarters. It's not that they stayed in bed. It's that the Giants figured out real quick what their defense could do and what their defense could absolutely not do. And you know what they couldn't do? They couldn't stop Daniel Jones' run game. This man ran like... Yep, I've yeah. never seen him run before. Yeah, because he tripped last time he ran. <laughs> <laughs> like I've never <laughs> best best game of his career was played on on Sunday, no doubt about oh, that. Oh, one hundred percent. I was telling Adam um, before this, we were we were chatting, and uh, honestly, this is the best. This is the best out of Daniel Jones I've ever seen, even in, even in college. This 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 right here is. Amazing. And so I asked Austin after he said that, I said, well, what do you think that's attributed to? And he said, he's got weapons. I said, yeah, he's got some. But let me tell you what it's really, really attributed to. And I've said this probably every single podcast, but I'm going to say it again. The coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Alex, I want to hear your opinion on this because just like me, I'm sure you've sat here for four, five, six years, and just watch these pathetic oh. coaches, this pathetic coaching staff that sit on the sidelines and look like they could care less if they win a game or if they could lose a game. And then you got Brian Dable coming in here, fired up. You got Wink Martindale, fired up. And this team is a legit great team. Let me hear it from you, legit. man. See, we all started, everybody knows, we, who's Ben McAdoo? And then after Ben McAdoo, you want to get us a special teams coach and Joe Judge. Those It wasn't it, and everybody knew it wasn't it. So now we bring in Dable, and Dable's coming with championship experience from being in Alabama with Nick Saban, you know, and also with Buffalo. Like, the transformation he did with Josh Allen – 
is being shown in Daniel Jones right now. A hundred percent. With this game that was with this game that was just played, Daniel Jones ran seventeen rushes for seventy eight yards. Barkley nine rushes for fifty three. That's insane. Yeah. That yeah. comes from coaching. Like you just said before, they found out what Minnesota's defense couldn't do, and they attacked it. Yep. Yeah, it well, was. Well, not to mention, Minnesota's defense was doing soft coverage the entire game. Every throw was super soft coverage. The rush was not being executed properly. So every time our defense rushed, I got, Daniel I, Jones just slid out of the pocket and ran for it. And I got to be honest, Andy, like, I mean, you were watching the game. I was watching the game. Minnesota's defense looked like terrified of the Giants. They looked like they were scared to play. They looked like Matt Jones. Like, well, they just looked like they were not confused. Like they didn't know where to be, what you know, where to run. Alex, you were going to say something. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. We all talk about RPO, run pass offense. You know, everybody could be two dimensional. But for the first time, I can honestly say that the Giants became a three-dimensional team and they just didn't know what to do. Quarterback could run. Passing was working. Rushing was working. You, you, had, to, you had to pick one and they couldn't stop one. We had three of them going at the same time. It wasn't going to end well for them. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, I mean, I'll say it again. I mean, it goes goes back to coaching. And one of the things that, like, obviously I've had a lot of respect for Brian Dable coming in and, and getting this team to where they are. But I earned, like, so much more respect for him because one of the plays, uh, I forget, it might have been third and ten or, or, or whatever it was, Darius Slayton drops the ball. He should have had it, should have caught it. Yeah. He's obviously worked up. Darius Slayton was catching everything that night. Like, that was, like, the one pass that he should have caught that he didn't. He was snagging stuff that he yep. shouldn't even be able to catch. And the first thing he does, Brian Dable walks up to him and says, him right up it's good, good, bro. It's good. It's good. Instead just of just being like, one. yeah, instead of being like, we should have had that. You should. He's like, dude, you're good. You've caught everything all night. Sit back, relax, get back in there when it's our chance. And I was like, that's a good coach, dude. Yeah, cool. That's a good coach. The coach that's going to be like, listen, you messed up. I get it. It sucks, but I'm not going to harp on that and, and hang on to that when you have a chance to go fix it. Like, that's good coaching. Like, and again, like, how many times did you see freaking Joe Judge talking to the players at all? He like, he, like, Never. he, like, sat there with his headset on like he was high and mighty and, like, nobody ever talked to him. And it's like, you suck. You suck. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Giants – Beat the Vikings in a game that a lot of people didn't expect them to win. I, I sure did. The Vikings have been a like the Vikings have been a great team all season. But Andy, it goes back to what we've talked about on multiple episodes. All of the all of the Vikings games this year have been close. They've won by close games. So I know oh, yeah. you I know you kind of thought this, Andy, but like because we have talked about it, like you said you've always been worried watching a Vikings game. Yeah, like, well, it comes down to that defense not being able to adapt over time. You know, they've played the same way all season long into the playoffs, and they needed to adapt in order to win. So that was the downfall. Yeah, I mean, that was a, that's a 13-5 and five team. Like, they're, they're a good team, but, I mean, yeah, it matters. It, it doesn't matter how much you win by – Versus how versus the fact that you won until you get to the playoffs, until you start playing the best of the best, that's when it matters. That's when it matters the most. That's when you can't squeak by with a field goal. That's when you can't squeak by with, you know, a one touchdown. Like, and that, that was kind of, I don't know. That was, that was their own grim reaper. They couldn't, they couldn't get that ahead of most teams. So what's what's well, next? that fourth and that fourth and eight check down to Hawkinson really sealed the deal for us there. That was pretty sad. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth and eight. And he throws three. Yeah, three I, yards. Thought it out. 
Cousins had a good game. He was like, what, 31 for 39 with 320 yards and two touchdowns or something like that? He had a good game. It was that last play that killed him. 31 for for 39. Yeah. 273 yards. Okay. And it was, yeah. 273. I don't know what got a hold of Kirk Cousins there. Like, fourth and eight, and you throw it for three yards to 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 a guy who is manned up. Like, the Giants' defense... Hit him right away. They were, like, right there. There was no avoiding it. Andy, tell me this. I mean, what's next for the Vikings? What do they do in this offseason? What are they What are they going to do in the draft? What do, you think the, what do you think the next move for the Vikings is? They've got to go after some defensive players because yep. currently a lot of their main capital, draft capital, is being held by 30-plus-year-old defensive players. And so they got to mm-hmm. dump some of those guys and get some new talent mm-hmm. in there. Because yeah. their offense is stacked. Yeah, they have a great offense. Yeah. They need to go yeah, right. the defense defense they need to focus. And yeah, they I'm probably need to restructure Kirk Cousins' contract, too, because Kirk Cousins is way, making way too much money right now. Not to mention, Patrick Peterson is washed up. Yeah. Patrick um, Peterson. Yeah, a lot of those guys are over 30. His, years old. Um, his prime days around the Cardinals and. He's he's just not looking like himself. They need to go for a Harrison corner Smith, or – go ahead. Yeah. Harrison Smith, yeah, he's making a lot of money. He's not playing like he used to either. Zadarius Smith, we picked him up last season, and he's not really showing the potential he should have. Even Hunter is not playing. Yeah, so it's really the defense that needs to be the focus. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I think that's what they need. They need a tight knife on defense for sure, um, 100%. But G-Men got it done, and that was super exciting for me. I 31 was, to 24. I was I was so hyped. I was so hyped. I mean, I was yelling at the TV. I, yeah, I was more than excited. More than excited. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, listen, even if the uh, – even if even if the Giants don't make it by the next round, I don't care because next next year, that Giants team is coming back better than ever. Mm-hmm. They're gonna come back stronger. Oh, they're, baby. they're gonna come back way more confident. They're gonna have a, had a whole season where the coaching staff and player chemistry has gone through the roof, where the overall team chemistry has gone through the roof. Like, I feel like. During the like, I obviously I follow a lot of the players on Instagram and whatnot, and it's like during like the Joe Judge days, it was like the players would post and stuff, but it there wasn't like there didn't seem to be like a big push for like you know like team building. Now it's like they're all about their team, so like I think this season has really shaped the future for what is this Giants team, and it's a it's a it's a young team. It's a very young team. It is. So there's tons of potential. So I'm excited, you know, with what the Giants are doing right now and what they continue to do. So, um, yeah. You know who else is a dog, too? Richie James. He does, Richie he James. Yes, he, he, he doesn't get much touches, but I think next year when they when they um, bump him up a little bit, I think he's going to be in, in – uh, an underrated star next year. Um, Isaiah Hodgins, too. Yeah. Yep. Same with him. Giants beat the Picked Vikings. Picked up off a waiver thing. <laughs> Gi- Giants beat the Vikings 31-24. to On to our next game, Bengals and Ravens. The Ravens surprised me. Dude. Yeah. Tyler Huntley, man. He, they surprised me. He, yeah. He shocked me for sure. I did not expect this to be a close game. No. I expected it to be a blowout. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, totally it's, uh, it's interesting because I, I, I don't know. Like, I've been riding hard for Joe Burrow in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, Joe Burrow's my guy, man. Like, I love Joe Burrow, but I wasn't all that impressed. I mean, Zach, you told me he was going to throw four picks. I want to hear what your what your thoughts on the game were. He didn't throw none. Zach, 
Zach, are you still with us? Or are you dead? You okay? Oh my goodness. Well, we'll get Zach's thoughts soon enough. But I, I mean, I was a little, I was a little taken back to be honest. Um, I thought that it was going to be a lot more of a bigger lead mm-hmm. for the Bengals, but Tyler Huntley kind of, you know, he showed him what he was capable of, and he put in the work there clearly. So, um, I mean, what do you? Let me ask you this though: Is Lamar going to stay with the Ravens after this season? I don't, I don't see it. So, what do they do? Trade them or release them. And then find a QB. Yeah. You know, someone like Jimmy G. I know it would be a weird uh, offensive scheme for Jimmy G at the Baltimore Ravens. But. It'd be interesting. <clears throat> it'd be interesting. I don't know. Who knows? What did you think of that game, Alex? I thought it was good, man. And like you said, surprisingly, but um, uh, Bengals Jamar still got it Chase, done. Though. Yeah, they got it done. You know, like they're they're strong. Their defense played good too. You know, they just got too comfortable at one point, and mm-hmm. then they expect it. Yep, I think that's what happened with the Vikings but, um, too. Yeah. But to add to that quarterback uh, situation, uh, Derek Carr might not be a bad Ooh, fit for Baltimore. That's, and we that's do know, bad. we do know that Derek Carr essentially he gave his goodbye to to the Raiders. Yep. He, he posted on Instagram. He said, "So he's moving on." So did Aaron Rodgers. Did he? Really? Did you hear about that? I did not. What did Aaron he Rodgers say? He said? said his goodbyes. He said his good, goodbyes is, um, to uh, Green Bay. To, yeah, to Green Bay. Is Aaron Rodgers going to stay in the league, or is he going to retire? And where would he go if he doesn't retire? That's interesting. That is. Who do you think wants Aaron Rodgers? Well, a lot of teams want him, but... But I'm saying, like, who do you think is a legitimate person that wants him that he'll go to? Let me ask it that way. Like, where, where, where do you think he'd go? Maybe Vegas. Maybe Colts. But I don't think he wants to play for a scrubby team. But I don't think he wants to play for a scrubby team. The Vikings or the Green Bay Packers are a scrubby team. Why do you think he's leaving? Right, but... Okay, listen, you have Aaron Rodgers. Say say he's at the Colts. You got Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Um, You have Pittman. You have... Who else is there? Um... I forget, but they got some weapons over there, but they don't have a good quarterback. Matt Ryan. Or a good coach right now. Matt Ryan's washed up. Okay, so I'm thinking. I don't know. You think Aaron Rodgers possibly to the Colts? That's what I'm thinking. Or I think Vegas is also an option. Reunited with Devontae Adams. Right. That could be interesting. And, they, and their defense is suspect, but it got potential. No, Devontae Adams is leaving too. What do you uh, bet? He, he wants to leave. What do you bet Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers somehow end up together? I'm not betting because I know it's it's definitely a well, shot. Well, not like bet, but what do you like? I, it's definitely a shot. That could shake up the lead <clears throat> because those two have crazy <clears throat> chemistry. Um, yeah, like I, I would put Devonte Adams and Aaron Rodgers chemistry on like and Josh Jacobs. Well, I would put, I would put their chemistry close to like. Don't say some stupid shit. I'm gonna say close to, but not at the same level, but a couple notches down. You're, you're gonna hate me. You're, you're gonna hate me. Say it. Say it. Why don't you say it for me? Because you know what I'm gonna say. I'm not 100 percent sure what you say. You're it, say and I'll tell you if you're wrong. Brady and Moss. Close to. Oh my Close god! To. Not Get at the same, out of here. But like I said, not at the same level. There are a couple tiers below, but they're close to it, dude. 
and I'm also I'm also going to say the same thing about Joe Burrow and all of his receivers. Joe Burrow has crazy chemistry with his receivers. Well, like, he has a lot of chemistry with Chase. Chase, because they played together at right. LSU. Like that's they they will have if they keep at the rate they they're at. I think they may have the greatest chemistry of all time in the league. Um, just because they have so much history, you know, like these guys have been playing since since college together. Yep. But I don't know. I mean, we'll see where Aaron Rodgers goes. We'll see what what ends up happening with with Derek Carr. Um, I wouldn't. I I'm interested to see where Derek Carr goes. You said possibly the Ravens. somebody's going to Washington. You think someone's no. going to Washington? No, I don't think so. I, I you don't think so? No. Um, they already have a uh, pretty good um, quarterback with um, Taylor Heineke. T- Taylor Heineke and Sam Howell, the rookie out of UNC. He he shocked the okay. world when he beat when he beat the Cowboys last week. <laughs> And he didn't just beat them; he throttled. Yeah. Them. Well, let me see the score. It was like six he to. Did. It was um. Twenty six to six. Yeah, a twenty point game. Like, that's that's a rookie. I mean, it shocked me. It shocked me for sure. It, it, Sam Howe wasn't even a first round pick either. Yeah. No. So I don't know. We'll we'll. See. You know what I'm kind of liking? What? Derek Carr to the Panthers. That's actually not a that would be yeah. that would make sense actually. That that could actually make some serious sense. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised at that. Or maybe even maybe maybe even the Rams. Because the Rams need a QB yeah. too. They have a actually I don't know. Dude, Staff, Stafford's Staff is, coming back. Yeah, but Stafford is old, man. Let let's be let's let's call it what it is like Stafford wasn't even when he won the Super Bowl he wasn't a great quarterback. Like he had people that he has Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup can Tyler catch Higby. anything and everything. You don't have to be a good quarterback to throw to Cooper Cup. Like, yeah, no, you know. So it's like <laughs> Matt Stafford was never a like he was a he was a really good quarterback in his first couple of years. But but Detroit with Detroit, yeah. But I mean, he's old now, dude. He's 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 about ready to retire. So you think you think you think Baker Mayfield's not going to take the reins? No, because I think Baker Mayfield is suck. He sucks, and I think he Baker Mayfield suck, is <laughs> Baker Mayfield is two more picks away from going and selling used cars. Yep, with Carson Wentz. Like, uh, yeah, that's another thing. Carson Wentz. The, the commanders are stupid. <laughs> For even holding, for even trading for him. Yeah, it was a it was a bold move by them, for sure. See, I don't, I don't know. Seattle set. Um, yeah. I'm a I'm. We'll see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of QBs up for grabs. Brady's up for grabs, if he's, no, he's if he decides to play. He's going back to the Pats. No, he's not. Dude, there's a legitimate shot. No, he's not. One last season? No, he's not. <laughs> Dude, I'm... Get out of here. You're, there's, there's a you're legitimate smoking shot. smoking grass. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. But yes, the Bengals squeaked out a win 24-17. to 17, And then Monday Night Football, this game. No, skip over Tom it. Tom Brady. Skip over it. Lost his perfect record against the Dallas Cowboys. <sighs> And what a way to lose. 31 to 14. Shut up. Man alive. He got throttled. I don't care. He's the GOAT. He's still the GOAT. Well, yeah, but he still got throttled. I mean, I hate the that Cowboys. was an embarrassment. I hate the Cowboys. I fell asleep during the game four times and woke up, yeah. and he was still getting throttled. They look terrible. So bad. So When's the last time the Tom Brady got a good old fashioned whooping like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, he got one in the middle of the season against Joe Burrow. No, against, and against Brock Purdy. Against Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Giselle did give him a, did give him a whooping. Dude, I, I still think that's the reason why he's not playing well. Well, yeah, dude. Like you dude, can't. You go through a divorce and almost lose your kids, dude. 
Why in the middle of his football season? Well, we know he didn't lose his kids because he's been kissing them on the... On said, the almost, uh, he's been kissing them and having them were... sit between his legs and posting on Instagram. Dude, that, I don't care who you are. That's creepy, bro. That's creepy. That's Tom Brady, though. It's still that's, creepy, that's bro. That's Tom Brady, though. I don't care, dude. <laughs> he His kid is like 14 years old, bro. You think, you think I wouldn't kiss Tom Brady? Bro. I bro, would, right on the lips, dude. I really Imagine would. you're 14 years old and your father... <laughs> Randy Rahilly is kissing you on the mouth. Rand- Randy would never do that. No. Randy's looking down at us right now like, Tom Brady's a creep. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I don't think he's a creep. He's weird. Dude, he's no different He's than... going to go to Miami, and here's why he's going to go to Miami. No, no, no. That's because he can kiss for. Mike McDaniel oh my God. on the lips. They're going to have a nice, healthy relationship. Brady's new girlfriend is a smoke show, though. Dude. She's an absolute don. No, Beautiful bro, blonde. I mean, he's Tom Brady. He was he was never going to have issues anyway, but I don't know, man. He got... Whew. I think he upgraded. Yeah. Uh, well, she's younger. <laughs> <laughs> he got his head given to him on a silver platter by Dak Prescott. And... Um, that's embarrassing because Dak Prescott ain't that good. And Dak Prescott nope. is going to get throttled when he plays the San Francisco 49ers. And know. with that being said. Like I was going back to, you know, anyone that loses, almost loses his kids, loses his wife in the middle of a football season, that will mess up anyone's brain. And I think – I think that's the real reason why he's not playing like he like he is. Cause I couldn't even imagine that, dude. I can only imagine. Um <laughs> and uh going into this, let's let's talk about our picks for next week. We got the first game. Jaguars facing off against the Chiefs. Here's going to be the order. I'm going to give my pick. Then we're going to go to Austin. We'll go to Alex. And then we'll finish it off with Zach. Jaguars and Chiefs, just because I want to see Patrick Mahomes lose so bad, give me the Jaguars 21-17. to 17. Yeah. Um, I honestly hate Patrick Mahomes. Um, give me the Jags. 10 to 13. Ooh. What do you think, Alex? Uh, all right. I'm going. I don't know, man. I'm going to have to say Chiefs 24 20. Okay. And I'm only going with that. You know, Mahomes, everybody's coming off a of rest and. It just that that was just dynamic. Yeah, unfortunately, Zach. What are your pick? Listen, none of us want the Chiefs to win, but they might have to because they're playing Trevor Lawrence and company. How is he? How is he in this like this late in the playoffs? I don't know, but he is. <clears throat> um, man, I gotta go, Patrick Mahomes. I'm going Chiefs, twenty eight, thirteen. Wow. Giants and Eagles. This isn't even just because they're my team. I think the Giants have a legitimate shot at beating the Eagles. If they did what they did this week, Mm -hmm. I legitimately think that the Giants can beat the Eagles. And I'm picking Giants. We're going to go. Oh, let's see. We're going to go. twenty seven. To 20. Okay. So, the only reason why I'm picking the Giants is because Eagles are coming off a rest. Okay. And I don't think Jalen Hurts is 100% either. No, he's not. So, that means... I don't even even think he's going to play. Oh, perfect. Um, You know, I... That's the only reason because... (sighs) Eagles are coming coming off of bye week, and I don't think they're gonna do 
much. So I'm going Giants 24-27. Alex, what's your pick? All right. Again, not only because they're my team, and I'll explain. I'm taking the Giants. In week 18, Philly needed to win that game so they could clinch their number one seed. The Giants decided to rest their starters. Everybody. And it was Giants a almost won that game. Yeah. 22 to 16 against the second and third string teams. Coming off of a strong win now in Minnesota. The Giants are coming in hot. We're coming in ready. Giants up 31 24. And Zach? Zach? Where did Zach disappear to? All right. Well, when while we wait for Zach, Christopher just joined us. He's going to we're we're right into the picks. So we've only done the Jaguars and Chiefs, Chris. So I want to hear your picks for um, Jaguars facing off against the Chiefs and the score. Um, I think it's going to be a close one. Actually, believe it or not, um, the way the Jaguars played um, this past weekend, I think they actually have um, <clears throat> a little bit of a shot. Uh, so. I'm going to say um, – I'm going to say 24 24-21 Kansas City. Okay. And then Giants and Eagles. Um, I'm going to go with the Eagles on this one. And I'm going to say twenty-seven <clears throat> seventeen. Okay. And Zach, are you back with us? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. So give us your, your prediction for Giants facing off against the Eagles. Yeah, so what's your other buddy's name that's in the podcast today? Alex. Alex. Alex, man, that was a beautiful story. You really laid it out first week 18. <laughs> that was fantastic, man. And I really can hear the passion in your voice and the fan in your voice. I love to hear it, man. And because of that, I'm going to pick the Eagles 51-3 <laughs> to three over the fucking <laughs> <Friday. laughs> oh, my! Wait, what was your final score? 51-3. Say it again. 51 to 3, baby. Oh, my goodness. You're a clown. All right, so new order. Chris, you'll go right after Zach on this on these next two picks. Um, so, right. so same order. Chris will go after Zach. Bengals and Bills. Give me Joe Burrow. I think he's going to beat him because I love Joe Burrow. Give me the Bengals. It's going to be a real close one. 24-21. I don't know. They both didn't play as good as I thought they would. Um, give me. I think it's the Bills time to shine, dude. I really I, give me the Bills. Twenty-one, twenty-one, going into overtime. Bills winning it by a field goal. So twenty-four, twenty-one. Yep. Alex. Wow. <laughs> I believe he hit that one right on the money because I was going in the same direction. Yep. Overtime. Bills by four goal, 24-21. Yep. Wow. Uh, Zach. So the Bills are a little bit a little bit embarrassed from last week. A lot of people are talking, you know, is this going to be enough to get to the Super Bowl? And they're really going to come out here and just uh, shut all you guys the heck up. I'm going Bills 51-3, to three, the same exact score as the Eagles. <laughs> Let's go. And Christopher. I'm going with the Bengals. I'm taking the underdog because Josh Allen struggled to his deep balls yesterday and had trouble, you know, connecting with his receivers. And I really think that might 
transfer over to to this weekend against against Cincinnati. Um. So I'm going. I'm going the Bengals. Um, twenty-one seventeen. All right. So. All right. <clears throat> the one of the reasons why I picked the Bills is because well, let's let's be honest here. Eli Apple is garbage. He used to be white. Yep, he used to be white till he got burned. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's so, trash. And Alex and I know that more than most people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know that Josh Allen had trouble connecting with his re- receivers with the deep ball, but that was against Xavier. Uh, was it Xavier Howard? Yeah, and that was against him. Um, the Bengals have no good corners. Eli Apple's garbage. So uh, they got Je- they got Jesse Bates over the top. Oh though. yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. They got Jesse Bates. But other than that, man, they they need to do something with him, with Eli Apple. They need to just throw him away. They need to kick him to the curb. That's like, what they need to do. They won't kick him to the curb because they said that's their best corner. Yeah, well they're they're <laughs> they <need> smoking to- <laughs> something, and I want to take a fat rip of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Next game, Cowboys and 49ers. Season's over for the Cowboys. Give me the 49ers, 41 to 20. Yeah, give me them uh, Brock Purdy, 49ers. Um, Let's go 42. To 17. Mm, 42-17, I like that one. See, now this one for me depends on what Dallas defense shows up. Uh, I don't feel Purdy has really faced a tough defense. Dallas got a tough defense sometimes. Yeah. But Keyword, I am taking sometimes. the 49ers. 32-24. Zach, Mr. Snyder. Guys, you know my favorite team in the league by far is the Green Bay Cowboys. <laughs> there ain't no way they're going to lose this week to them San Francisco boys out there. Oh, my. Uh, I got, you know, the offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, most winningest quarterback in college football history, a Boise State Bronco. Cowboys win big here, guys. Seven <laughs> Boise to State nine. Bronco. Zach, when he was a kid, was the biggest – Boise State fan ever. I liked them too, only because of their field. That's about it. He had every right. He had every right to be a Boise so, State fan. So what yeah. was your score, Zach? Was it 51 to 3? It was no, no, no. 72, to, 72 to something. Yeah, my score was the same exact score of Kellen Moore's last game at Boise State against Arizona State. He beat him up 72 to 9, so that's what we're going with, guys. Wow, Chris, boy, um, <laughs> how do you, you guys, fo- how do you follow did you, that? Did you, guys, <laughs> did you guys know that Xavier Rhodes is on the Dallas Cowboys now? Is he really? Yeah, he played last night. They signed him to the practice squad, and he's like third or fourth string corner. All roads are closed, baby. They used to be. Yeah, you. <laughs> but when he was I'm on gonna, the Vikings, I'm, that was him. Yeah, I'm definitely going with the 49ers on this one, and I think it's going to be uh, 36-21. Okay. All right, let's do this. We we did it last week. We'll do it one more time. Let's give our uh, Super Bowl prediction. I'm sticking with the Bengals. It's going to be – it's going to be the Bengals – Man, this is tough for me. Not really. <laughs> Not really. Well, you think it's going to be 49ers and who? Bills. Yeah. I um I I don't think that. Um, you don't think 49ers are going? No, nah, they might. So, yeah, give me Bengals Niners. Bengals Niners. 
Oh, wait, they can't even play together. Or against each other, can they? Why not? Wait, they can. Yeah, yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah they can. Why? Yeah, give me Bengals. Bengals facing off versus the 49ers. Bengals. Niners. And the Bengals are going to win it. That's my that's my Super Bowl prediction. What's your Super Bowl prediction, Austin? Bills 49ers. 49ers are going to win it. <clears throat> Alex, what are you what are you liking for the Super Bowl? Bills Giants. Woo! The Battle of New York. Let's <laughs> go. Who wins it? <laughs> Giants by a field goal. And maybe it's Buffalo missing the field goal. Ooh. Ooh. Oh man. Zach, what, what what's your uh, what's your look at the Super Bowl? Guys, low probability here, high high risk, high reward type pick I got going on here. Um, I really He's think that games. something's gonna get called back. Perhaps Doc Prescott was using steroids and whatnot, so I think that game's gonna be overturned, and it's gonna be the Bills and the Buccaneers. <laughs> 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 and, and who wins it? The Buccaneers. <laughs> Zach, who wins it? The Bills? <laughs> Zach. Bro, obviously Josh Allen's gonna win the title, man. And, and gonna, what would be the, the and, title? And what would humor us? What would be the score? Uh you know, I'd say like five to four, probably. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get five? A field goal and a safety. A field goal and a safety. <laughs> and a it's two safeties is four. And then how do you – yeah, but how do you get – Oh, two, sa- two safeties. So you're telling me there's going to be three safeties in the game and one field goal. <laughs> you are shot, my guy. Chris. Yeah. I'm going – I'm going 49 angles. See? Chris and I are educated men. Dude, I don't know. I think it's th- – And who I, wins it, Chris? 49ers. My guy, I think I'm really, really solid on, uh, on the 49ers right now. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be a close one. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's gonna be. Um, Seventeen to fourteen. Okay. Do you, does anybody have any clothing? Clo- clothing. Anybody I, I have, have any? Sure. Does anybody have any clothing statements? I think we should. I think we should kind of podcast. I think we should kind of. Looking to trade rumors now. Oh, you want to talk about trade rumors? Yeah, we talked a little bit. Everyone, go ahead. We got time. <clears throat> lead, I think. I think lead, lead us in this segment. I think realistically, Derek Carr goes to the Panthers. Yeah, <clears throat> Chris, what do you think about that? You weren't with us when we we discussed that. I mean, what are your uh, what are your thoughts on that? No, see, I love trade rumors because. It, because they're trade rumors. <laughs> Everyone loves rumors, but. Here's the here's the deal with Derek Carr is he he him and the Raiders the Raiders aren't gonna trade him in the uh, into a team that's in the division mm. okay so you, you can forget about that Derek Carr is gonna want to go somewhere where he's familiar with people and with strategy I think. Um, I think I do not know. I don't have a clue where Derek Carr is going to end up right now. Right. Derek Carr, could, Derek Carr could end up in 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 Washington. You think so? For all we know, that's what. Uh, for all we know. I don't. I don't. Alex I don't, said he thought someone was going to Washington, so I maybe. So. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, we know Derek Carr is going somewhere. Right. Either retirement. Yeah. Or to a team, but he's not no, sticking where, around the Raiders. Where's the Mar going? Tom Brady's gonna get a few calls too this year. Or... Yeah. yeah, with the Patriots. <clears throat> no, yeah. Where do you think Lamar will go? Like, I we haven't even talked about this. I mean, he's got to go somewhere, but where? I think the Jets is a really good possibility. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I don't hate it. Um, Reunites with his other Lamar Jackson. Oh wait, you're tripped out. There's another Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Well, no, I was, <laughs> I was looking at Adam. There sure is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where Lamar goes. Alex, where do you, where do you think Lamar's going? 
Mm. I like how the jet sounds. That wouldn't be a bad idea. They need a QB. They do. Heck yeah. That but they've, they've always there. struggled with finding a good QB. That would be solid right there. As if they can get receivers. <laughs> and then who goes, who goes to Baltimore? Or do they draft? You know what? Ooh. That's a good question because I think Russell Wilson goes to Baltimore. He's not going to Baltimore. Nobody wants him. Harbaugh Har- Harbaugh loves them college kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think JJ McCarthy might go. JJ McCarthy's <laughs> not in the draft, homie. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sick? Yeah, He's sending up his brother. Um. Let's see who else. Is Baker Mayfield staying in what do you got to LA? With Odell? Odell, dude, I don't know, dude. Odell could have played for any number of teams this year, and he didn't. Like, I don't, uh, I don't know, they're, man. They're they're talking about him uh, practicing to try and get in the NBA. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> this guy, this guy. Yeah, because his knee is so bad. You know, he doesn't want to chance it. You know. We getting getting hit again and causing re injuries. So the Odo Beckham, less- Odo Beckham injury. Jr. to the PGA Tour. Is this podcast still going? <laughs> yeah, it's still going. He's Zach. Like, oh, going? We're talking about trades, baby. Where, where do you think Big is Baker staying in LA? Nobody wants. Baker. Baker. I think Baker will stay in LA. Dude, I said this before you got as on, Chris. Up. But Baker as, Mayfield, as a Baker Mayfield is two picks away. From selling used Buicks at a car lot with I think I, Andrew Luck, I Carson like Wentz. Them. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Now, where's Aaron Rodgers going? Yeah, where's A, a-, a- Rodgers going, man? That's a good question. A Rodgers is staying in Green Bay. No, mm-hmm. he said goodbye to Green Bay. He said goodbye to Green Bay. Did he really? Well, he's pulling the fire and he's going to Minnesota. Oh, oh my. That would I don't, be no way. crazy. There's no, that wait a minute. When did he insane. say goodbye to Green Bay? I didn't see that. He's what? I haven't seen that yet. Is on ESPN? For real, for real. On God. I don't know. <laughs> that, that would, dude, Alex. That would be nuts, bro. If he went to. If he went to Minnesota, it says it says Aaron Rodgers mulling future with Packers or possibly elsewhere. Aaron Rodgers says he's not mentally or emotionally ready to make decisions about if he's leaving Green Bay or not. I swear to God, he said goodbye. He needs to smoke a little bit more weed, listen to Bob so, Marley, and just sit and meditate before he can make the decision. So we don't know yet. I don't know. Another one. Yeah. Where's Tom Brady going? And don't say the Pats. Realistically, where's he going? Tom Brady. Tom Brady's uh, gonna try and go to a team where, where you know that's structurally well put together, and where he thinks he can possibly win a, another Super Bowl title with Miami, another random team. Miami. He might Miami as well and go to Hill. Indy and be a coach too. Right. Tom Brady, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Mike Gusecki. He gets to he'd be able to kiss Mike McDaniel on the lips. It sounds like a good fit to me. <laughs> sounds like a real good fit to me. Zach, what do you think about seeing your your good boy Mike McDaniel just smooching with uh the old Michigan alum Tom Brady? I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but I'd love to see it, man. No, no, nobody no nobody's back. nobody's seen it yet, but if he goes to Miami, everybody will see it. Oh, yeah, for sure. It'd be a passionate kiss. I mean, we're all looking forward to it, man. You know, we got Tom over here who loves to kiss his children. And Mike McDaniel, who probably just kisses anyone's children, right? So it's, it's, it's very... I got popsicles in my face. Think, Hi, Chris. I think, I think Tom probably goes to either Tennessee or um, perhaps Las Vegas. Reunites with... Uh, McDaniel. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Anybody got any closing uh, closing statements before we wrap this up? 
What's your closing statement, Austin? None. Don't have one. Alex, do you got any, any closing <clears throat> statements for the people at home? Go G-Men. Go G-Men. Zach, closing statements? Go Raiders. <laughs> Go Raiders. And uh, Chris, what's your closing statement? Things are, things are going to get heated up this weekend, boys. Strap it down and get ready. Very much so. Well, I want to thank our, our guests for coming on. Andy already left. He always leaves after we talk about the Vikings, yep. ironically. Everybody um, stay on, though. Yeah, we're going to stay on. We're going to chat about this afterwards. Um, but we want to thank our guests. Alex, you've been a great addition to the show tonight. We're going to have you back for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, always right, a pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. And Zach, you keep things interesting. I'll tell you that much. I'll, I'll tell you that much. But, ladies and gentlemen. Especially when you meet yourself all the time. Yeah. Hold on, bro. Hold on. I was really trying to get the hammer tonight, and I never got it, bro. Oh. <laughs> You're hammered. I was hammer. really best. working for the hammer, dude. You're officially, you are officially hammered, my guy. Well, I think it was that a fun night, guys. After, after last week, we were just kind of flabbergasted by the things you said. So you could say literally anything, and we, we would count it as normal. So, <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, as always, this has been the Penford Sports Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Listen to us wherever you get your podcast. And uh, as always, I've been Adam Alchuk along with Austin Rahilly. And this has been the Penford Sports Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week as we talk more about playoff football. Good night, America.